October 25th, 1944. In the Formosa Strait, dozens of Americans fight to survive a sunken submarine. USS Tang Stern sits on the bottom. The only escape hatch is at the bow of the submarine. The bow, which is still filled with air, is actually jutting out of the waves, sort of like a knife blade, if you will, coming up. But with Japanese escorts on the hunt, the exposed section makes them vulnerable. The men choose to sink their damaged submarine to conceal it while they prepare to escape. They decide to level the boat, to release all the air from the forward ballast tanks, and to let the bow of the tank come down and rest on the bottom. They release the air, and the tank dives for a final time. An hour after Tang sinks, the last of its crew reaches the bow. And then they get to the forward torpedo room. Several dozen men, they ultimately all crowd inside and they seal that door. And inside that tor forward torpedo room is the escape chamber. The entire submarine lies 180 feet below the surface. as Tang's crew prepares to brave the ocean. Another attack stops them short. As these men are, are there, crowded inside the forward compartment, terrified about how they're going to make it 180 feet up to the surface, the Japanese are coming over, and they're dropping depth charges. So here they are, stuck on the bottom, and their boat's still being rattled. The conditions at this point in the forward torpedo rim of the tank are, are awful. The battery compartments are on fire. It's hazy at this point. The air pressure is rising and the heat and humidity are rising. All of these things combine to sap the energy from these men who are facing this life or death struggle as to how to get off of the sunken boat. 13 men muster the strength to attempt an escape it's a really daunting task, because at 180 feet, it's the equivalent of an 18-story building. At 8 AM, Tang's escape hatch closes for the last time. When they first step out, it's very dark. You can't see anything. And the farther they go up toward the surface, the water around them begins to lighten. Five of the 13 men survived the ascent. Even those who escape and make it all the way to the surface aren't necessarily guaranteed to survive. In fact, for some of those men, they watch others come up who are vomiting, who uh, blood is coming out of their noses, who are so exhausted and so sick at this point that they ultimately drown just a few feet away from their friends, their bodies carried out by the tide. 